Okay, what we have here is just a simple gear train uh, made up of a 50 tooth input gear connected to an input shaft, uh, which is turning a 25 tooth gear. This is an idler gear, uh, which is in turn turning a 40 tooth idler gear. And that 40 tooth idler gear is turning a 20 tooth gear, which is connected to an output shaft. Uh, so why we would need these two idler gears here, we, we don't need to get into. They don't really serve any, any basic purpose uh, for what we're dealing with here today. We just have an input and an output shaft and some idler gears in between. Now, you'll remember with a, a gear ratio, when calculating gear ratio, we don't concern ourselves with the idler gears. We're only worried about the input and output gear tooths. So we have 20 teeth over 50 teeth, and this is gonna give us a gear ratio for this entire gear train of 0.4. Uh, now there's another way to combine these gears, not in a simple gear train, but in what we call a compound gear train that will result in a very different outcome for our gear ratio. Okay, in this situation, what we have is what's called a compound gear train. And what's going on here is we have an input shaft hooked to our 50 tooth gear. This 50 tooth gear is matched with this 25 tooth gear, which is in turn going to rotate around this other shaft. Uh, now this is not the input shaft or the output shaft. Uh, this is just some inter intermediate shaft uh, or some shaft that's in between these other two. So we'll actually call this the intermediate shaft. So the 50 tooth gear is gonna drive this 25 tooth gear and there's a certain gear ratio between them and we'll talk about exactly what that is uh, because they have a, a line of action between them right along here. And so we'll be able to look at the gear ratio between these two gears. Now it's tempting to say this 25 tooth gear is simply an idler gear, just like it was here, but that's not gonna be the case. And I'll explain why in a minute. The reason this is different then the situation up here is this 25 tooth gear is connected to this intermediate shaft. It's, it's pinned to the shaft or, or in real life you'd have a situation where it's either welded onto the shaft or there's something like a, a, a key holding that gear onto the shaft. Well, also connected to that shaft is this 40 tooth gear. And because these two gears are both connected to the same shaft, that means they have to rotate together. Whereas here, the two gears were touching each other along this line of action right here. So it meant they shared tangential values or such as force and tangential distance or gear teeth traveled. Uh, here, we're gonna see a little bit different situation. Because this 25 tooth and 40 tooth gears are connected on the same shaft, that means if the 25 tooth gear rotates around once, the 40 tooth gear is going to have to rotate around once. And that means if we put a certain amount of torque on this 25 tooth gear, we're putting that torque on the 40 tooth gear as well. Now between the 40 tooth gear and this 20 tooth gear, there's again a line of action between these two gears. The gears are actually gonna mesh right here. And therefore they will share tangential values, just like they did up here. So if 10 teeth on this 40 tooth gear past this point, that means 10 teeth on this 20 tooth gear are gonna be pulled or pushed past this point right here. So in looking at our simple gear train, what we had were three lines of action. And ultimately what we had were two idler gears in the middle. Here in this compound gear train, what we have are really two sets of gears meshed together. We have the 50 and the 25 meshed together and the 40 and the 20 meshed together. And then connecting them, we have this intermediate shaft that is connecting one set of gears to the other. So we cannot treat these as idlers. So what we're gonna go through and do is work out the gear ratio, uh, this time for first the 50 and the 25 tooth gears. I'll call this gear ratio number one, just because it's acting on what we'll call line of action number one. So this gear ratio is going to be 
the output, that's 25 teeth, over the input, that's 50 teeth. And this gives us a gear ratio of 1 half or 0.5. Looking at this other line of action here, we'll call this the second line of action or line of action two or gear set two, whatever you want to refer to it as. There's a gear ratio there. So the gear ratio along this line of action number two is going to be the output that's 20 over the input that's 40. Now this is the output because it is the gear that is being driven. And this 40 tooth gear, that is the input gear because it is in fact a gear that is driving the, the output gear. And again, this gives us a gear ratio of 0.5. Now it's tempting to say the overall gear ratio here is 0.5, but I want you to realize, uh, let's go to a simple situation where we allowed this input shaft to rotate around once. That means right here on this first line of action, 50 input teeth are going to be drawn past this point. That means 50 teeth on this output gear, the 25 tooth output gear are gonna pass this point. So that means this output gear is gonna rotate around twice. That's where we get our gear ratio of 0.5. Realize that means our 40 tooth gear is also gonna rotate around twice. Well, that means 80 gear teeth are gonna pass this point right here on the second line of action. When if 80 gear teeth pass this point right here, that means 80 gear teeth on this output gear are gonna have to pass this point. Well, realize we started with one rotation, which is gonna cause 80 gear teeth to pass this point for this output gear. Well, that's four rotations. And ultimately what's going on here when we look at our gear ratios, for our total gear ratio, the total gear ratio is actually just the product of these two gear ratios. We have one gear ratio uh, and then we have another. And so we're simply just always multiplying those together. So this is going to give us 0.5 times 0.5 uh, and that is going to work out to be a total of 0.25. This is the total gear ratio for this compound gear trick. So the takeaway from all of this is that depending on how we arrange gears, not just which gears we have, but how they're arranged and how they're connected, we can vary the gear ratios. So it's really important to be careful about whether or not a gear is an idler within a gear train or whether it's sitting on something like an inter intermediate shaft and we actually have not a simple gear train, but a compound gear train. And with that in mind, that's all for now.